Kenny from Temple, Texas. Hi, Kenny. Oh, hello. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, I just got a, a new iPhone, and I wanted to know what's the best um, ad blocker out there. I know there's a, yeah. you know, there's some good ones. Came out when iOS 9 came out. Yeah. So, um, so how do you like it? First of all, you got the iPhone 6s. Uh, yeah, I got the 6s. Uh, um, bought it from a Best Buy, and they had a, a higher price. And luckily, I looked at the receipt. And <laughs> good. Was able to get them to Say, match. Hey, Apple. you're supposed to match apples. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, Apple controls the ch the channel so well that you really can't get a deal on an iPhone ever. But you shouldn't have to pay well, more. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, this was fifty dollars <laughs> above um, Apple's suggestion. What? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So I really, I've been a big, uh, big fan of this new iPhone. I got the 6s Plus. The pictures I've been taking are incredible. Love it. Um, and uh, highly recommend it. This ad blocker thing, a little controversial. It's available in all iOS 9 devices, not just the new iPhone. The one that is uh, the easiest is Crystal. The one that gives you more features is One Blocker, the number one and blocker. Uh, I would install both and try both. It's easy to switch either on or off and see which one you like best. This was a hot topic when Apple announced it on iOS 9, they were going to allow you to use an ad blocker in Safari. Now, it's kind of limited because it only affects stuff you use Apple's Safari browser with. So if you use a different browser like Chrome, it doesn't affect that. If you use apps with ads, it doesn't affect that. And most of the time, I think people, I don't know, my, at least I look at how I use um, my iPhone, certainly, maybe not so much on my iPad, but I don't use Safari that much. The problem is that, uh, unfortunately, it, there's a battle going on between users and ad networks. Sites, little sites, big sites who want to monetize, who want to you know, make a business out of their website. Take The Verge and Gadget or, or little guys like um, John Gruber's Daring Fireball. Lots of wonderful blogs have little ads. Unfortunately, most of the time, they don't sell those ads themselves. It's not practical. They go to an ad network, and Google runs one, Yahoo runs one, Microsoft runs one. There are lots of them. Google's the biggest by far. So they, they, they basically put a little code in there. They sign up for an account. They put a little code on their website that says, insert Google ad here on that website. And then Google handles the rest. It puts the ads in. It sells the ads, gives you a cut. doesn't give you a big cut. <laughs> it gives you a cut. Um, and, you know, I've done it in the past, and uh, sites don't do it anymore, but I've done it in the past. And it's a very effective uh, way to, especially for a small blog, to make a little money to kind of defray the costs. It costs you something to have a website. you got to pay for the hosting and the service and all of that stuff. So, um, unfortunately, these many of these ad services have gotten kind of out of hand, and you probably noticed this. You, you'll go to a website... It's really bad on mobile, but even on a desktop, you go to a website and there's not just a lot of ads, not just a little a lot of chunks of the page used up by ads, but ads that take over the page that you have to click around to read the stuff. Uh, jumping monkeys, punch the belly fat, whatever it is. There's just it's they're 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 more and more obnoxious, and of course, there's a reason for that because obnoxious ads get your attention. And for the most part, I think we ignore banner ads on websites, don't you? I mean, honestly. You know, I mean, when did you ever click on a banner ad on a website? And even if you did, it's very rare. And most of the time, I think we don't even see them. We've learned to just tune it out so we can read around the ads what we want. Ad blockers have been around for a long time. The idea being that uh, a couple of benefits. One, you speed up page load time because you don't load all this extra stuff. Uh, two, you, annoy, you get rid of annoying pictures on the screen. Uh, both of those are, I understand why, but there's an even more serious issue. Some ads can contain malware. And so people who are concerned about malware may want to block ads, especially Flash-based ads. And finally, um, ads can track you. Google certainly does. But if, if by having a little Google window on a website, you're giving Google access to information about you, who you are. And they can track you across any other website with Google Ads. And since most websites have Google Ads, they kind of can see how you move around on the Internet. Why do they want to know that? Well, mostly I would say, and this is what they say, to customize the ads they serve you. If they see you, uh, you know, shopping or you see you buying things or see you visiting certain kinds of sites. Let's say you're shopping for a car. They'll note that you visited a lot of car dealer sites. They might give you more car ads on other sites as well. 
I kind of they kind of get the signal that you're looking for a new car. And boy, advertisers would love to know that, wouldn't they? You're wasting an ad if you're advertising to somebody who's not buying a new car. If you're a car dealer, you don't want if you're if you're not in the market for a car, there's no point. You want to advertise only to people who are buying a new car or are going to buy a new car soon. So that kind of information is valuable. It's gold to advertisers. But some people feel it's an intrusion. It's in violation of their privacy. And so they'd like to block that tracking as well. So there's four good reasons for running ad blockers. It improves performance. It improves the aesthetics. Avoids malware. Turns off tracking. Uh, lots of sites say, though, the problem with it is uh, by putting an ad blocker on, you're, you're basically looking at our content without paying for it. Some of them even say it's like stealing. I'm not sure I'd go that far. I understand both sides. Look, I'm ad-supported. I have been my whole life. I've never, ever charged people for access to the radio shows or the podcasts or anything else I've done. I've always made money on them by advertising. So I love ads and advertising. I think it's a... I know that's a strange thing to say, but it's democratizing. It means you can get great content uh, without paying for it. The advertisers pay for it. You pay for it with your attention on the ads. When you don't see the ads, in effect, you I think you've broken that social contract a little bit. But at the same time, those are those four <laughs> benefits are pretty serious. And it's much worse on mobile. Ads on mobile can actually make a page unusable. And mobile, you're paying for the bandwidth. In most cases, you have bandwidth caps. It's just, it's it, it, it's so bad on mobile that I can understand why Apple, on uh, this new version of iOS, said, you know what, we're going to allow. They didn't put an ad blocker in, but they said, we're going to allow ad blockers. So if you have an iOS 9 device, you go to the App Store and you search for blockers. And there's quite a few, Crystal and Purify and one blocker. Uh, there are many more. Those are the three that come to mind. There's the big three. Uh, you download, and as soon as you download it, now you can go into settings and turn it on in Safari. You have to go to the settings and, and Safari and turn it on. So you need to download it, run it, and then go turn it on. If you run it, most of the time, if you run Crystal or Purify or One Blocker, it'll say, okay, next step, change your settings. At that point, you see fewer ads. I'm noticing they don't block all ads, and in fact... Crystal made a deal. <laughs> you don't have to accept it, but they made a deal uh, to, to for something called acceptable ads. And this is an interesting attempt to solve this conundrum of how do you have ads pay for these sites without annoying people and causing security and tracking issues? Well, they have an acceptable ads policy. Companies like Google pay uh, for access to you to, for, so you'll see their ads. Now, if you go in the settings of Crystal, you can turn that off. So you may want to turn it on or off depending on your feelings about all of this. Uh, Crystal's very easy to use. Purify is very easy to use. There are benchmarks out there. Some are better than others in terms of how fast they make your browsing. I notice that ads are starting to squeeze around them. Of course, this is a technology war. And uh, the people who do ads, they're not going to give up. Oh, okay, I guess you don't want to see your ads. We'll never show them again. No, they're figuring out ways to get around these blockers, and they seem to be succeeding. So I don't know how much longer blockers will be useful. I don't think it's wrong to use a blocker. I understand why people use blockers. Uh, and of the blockers, uh, you know, Crystal's easy, uh, you know, and you can decide whether to have some ads, so-called acceptable ads or not. Um, one blocker is more powerful and more configurable. So if you want to get into the neat, if you're that kind of person you want to get into the weeds there, that's a good choice. They all kind of roughly do the same thing. Google's responded to this with an interesting new thing called Google Contributor, which I kind of like and I'm paying into. You can, if you go to google.com slash contributor, essentially you can pay Google not to put those Google ads on the sites that have them, which is most of them. And then they give some of that money, some of the money they keep, some of the money they give to the site. So in a way, you're saying, I want to support the sites, but I don't want to see ads. I like that. You, you, you can do as whatever amount of money you want up to $10 a month. So I, I opted in for $10 because I want to use an ad blocker, but I want to feel bad about it. I do use ad blockers, but I also want to support those websites. So if you, want, if you, <laughs> if you have a guilty conscience and you want to help out, contributor might be one way uh, to do that. Give a few bucks, and then that money goes to the websites that you like. And in, fa and it, and in fact, uh, they probably make more money off of that than they would off of the Google ads. It's very controversial. Not quite the apocalypse we thought it would be. 
according to uh, reports so far, uh, this ad blocking hasn't really much changed anything. Good news. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.